Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come before you this evening, just giving your name, the honor and the praise. Lord, we thank you for your mercies and grace are made new every day, Father. Lord, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity to speak truth and life, Father God. We thank you for the souls that will be saved on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hola, konnichiwa, zabadi, bonjour. My name is Dara Smith. I am with C to the Nations LLC, also known as the Super Tiger, Super Tigress, and now DJ Dara A. I am so excited, you guys, to bring you another segment of Soul Saving Sunday. And the topic of discussion for today is finding my no. Before we get into that, I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to or a plug to Char Charbane Buchanan. And just want to encourage you guys to support her. She is absolutely amazing. The name of her business is called Sharbuka Hair Braiding, and you can reach her at 219-488-6726, and she is absolutely uh, amazing. I have to have her on one day for her to share her testimony, how God has definitely blessed her in her business. So now, guys, I am so excited. We're going to go ahead and, and get started. Oh, we got somebody else that logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and add the ladies into the broadcast. And we have my cousin Gia. Legia just logged in as well. So joining us, I have Marla Smith McCoy, my sister Marla. Let me make sure she's on there. She is my sister Marla Smith McCoy, my spiritual mom, Constance Clinton, my dear, dear friend, Aisha Chisholm. And just now entering the studio um, is my cousin, Legia Johnson. So ladies, is there, before we go ahead and get into the discussion, is there anything that you would like to say to the folks out there tuned in? Hello and welcome. Okay. Hello, everyone. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started then. So feel free if there's any comments or questions for those that have logged in, please feel free to put your comments in the box. And uh, so the topic for today is finding my no. Just so you know, for those that are tuned in, this is not scripted. I did not give any questions ahead of time so we're just having the ladies we're just chatting just a, a candid conversation and this is going to be fun we're going to have a good time so for the next 45 minutes i would just want you to sit back relax enjoy the ride put on your pjs get your popcorn and we're just going to have a good old time all just right earlier would you say miss connie oh you would have put your pjs on I would have put my PJs on and got my popcorn. Oh, that's right, because you're a popcorn. You love popcorn. Shoot, yes. I should have told you. All right, ladies, so let's dig right in. So the topic is finding my no. What does that mean to you? Where, when did you, did you find your no? Are you still working on your no? How, how does that look for you? Oh. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Let someone else start. <laughs> okay. I answer that. Okay. I I believe that I find well, hello everyone. Good evening. This is Constance Clinton. CC and style, Miss Connie, all of above. Okay. I hope all of you all are doing great. So I finally found my no. Um, last year, um, some of you all may know, and some of you all may not, I have been, um, the dance ministry over, um, at my church at Embassies of Christ as of last year was 23 years wow. over ministry. And every time I always say yes, yes, constantly do. Um, never have time for myself. And God allowed me to start sewing. And when I got into it, 
Um, I notice a lot of things and a lot of um, ways that people were so used to me saying yes, that when I started saying no, that I started uh, receiving um, negative um, attitudes or negative response. And so I started shrinking back and I started noticing some things. And when I wasn't saying no, I noticed that my body was always challenged. And now it is, it will be a year, December. And I noticed that my body is beginning to feel better. I'm beginning to do more things for myself, go places. I think I've been so many, been in so many trips within the last year where this past year, I know before the end of the year last year, I was on at least two trips to Florida. So I'm constantly going, I'm constantly doing things. So I noticed that even Jesus said no. You know, sometimes we think we have to say yes because we are believers, we're Christians, um, we go to church, but sometimes we do have to say no for our sake. So yes, I'm beginning to find my no even the more, even now. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm beginning to walk in my no a little bit more. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Miss Connie. And I found it also really interesting that you were saying that you were having the challenges in your body. And as a result of, you know, the no and the the what you receive behind that. And then you notice that when you start saying or when you were saying yes, what you were feeling in your body, but then when you started saying no, you started feeling even better. So I thought that was really interesting that you made note of that. So thank you for that, Miss Connie. And for those that have tuned in, you're tuned into Soul Saving Sunday. I would be remiss if I did not give the guided scripture on today, which is Matthews 5. Hey, Gia, which is Matthews 5 and 37, the amplified version. It says, but let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no, in brackets, it says a firm yes or a fir firm no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. So we're tuned in to Soul Saving Sunday and we're talking about finding our no. So we just heard from Constance Clinton and she shared with us about finding her no. And now I would like to ask someone else to give their thoughts on finding their no or maybe they already had their no. I'll share, Dara. So okay. for me, it has a double meaning. I think of it as no. And, uh, and, and hello, everyone. I'm jumping right into it. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Really glad to be a part of this conversation this early evening. But for me, the no has a double meaning. I really thought about it. And um, there's N-O and then there's K-N-O-W. So I feel like those two go together. Um, mm. Part of the no... Uh, there's a direct correlation for me to knowing and having a self-awareness. And I, I think it's important before you can really be fully available to do for others, you have to, it's important to, to start and do for yourself first. Your tank needs to be full in order to have gas and energy. And, and this ties back to a lot of what Constance was saying and what I heard from her. You can give and give and give and give so much to others that you don't have anything left for yourself or not very much. So I think for me, it's still work in progress. And I think it will always be because I'll, I'll you know, take each situation as it comes and assess it. And, uh, but I, I do find that as I get older, I'm definitely more comfortable in, in my skin, um, in my abilities, what I'm able to do, what I'm willing to do and knowing, um, just that self-awareness. So for me, it's no. Um, I think by nature, I am quicker to, to try to find a way to say yes. But <laughs> I'm really trying to focus more on knowing what I am, I have capacity to do. Oh, that's good. Knowing that's what I have good. capacity. I want to mm -hmm. throw a question out there and I and I still want to hear from everybody else. Do you believe that there's some truth when they say when you reach your 40s, that's when you just start? I don't want to say not caring, but I know for me, that was a breaking point when I turned 40 that 
I really started to embrace my no. And it's still a work in progress for me, but it's much easier for me to say no. Um, so I want to hear your thoughts. So do you feel like it was when you turned, got into your 40s or how did that look for you? I'm just kind of curious to see everybody's thoughts oh, on that. Um, that's that's a great question. Hello again, everyone. Nice to be with everyone this evening. I would say that that is definitely what I've experienced in my 40s. I have a, a dear friend that I met while I was living in Arizona and she's a little bit older than me. And um, one thing that she told me right on the cusp of my 40th birthday, she said, you're going to learn who you are, not as if you don't already know who you are, but she said, you're going to learn who you are. You're going to own it. You do not care what other people have to say, what they think. It's just going to be a different experience in your 40s. And I listened. I was like, OK, well, kind of knew who I was. And but she was so right. Like, I've, I've never been the type of person to who has had to um, find my no. And I'll touch on that in a bit. But I, I think that what you're asking are is um, or what you what your statement is as far as knowing who you are in your 40s. And finding your no, I think that that does come easier with age. I think something kind of clicks in a woman's mind, maybe, because you're like, everyone talks about the dreaded 40s. And so you're like, well, I'm here now. And I'm do, <laughs> I wanted to do what I would like to do. And so, yeah, I think that there's some truth to that. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Anyone else? I can go. Um, um, I want to say... Okay. It's okay. I can go after. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I already talked already. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I would say I would say yes to the 40s. I feel like a lot shifted for me. Um I think uh I guess I would also say too, like I feel like my no actually came through a burnout. I mean, I had had multiple burnouts already, um, but I had like a major burnout um, maybe about six, six months or so ago. And I think it was at that point where it was just like, I can no longer um, continue to, every time I say yes to somebody else, I'm saying no to myself. Mm. And, and that kind of, that really took a toll on me. And so I've gotten, I, I feel like no is actually now for my own survival, you know? Mm -hmm. And it actually just makes me a better person, like a better friend, a better daughter, I feel like, when when I'm able to just be honest about what my capacities are. And so I think a lot of what um, Marla said makes sense, like just knowing myself um, a lot better. And I do think that that came in my 40s, um, kind of like living, um, embracing who I am um, and just, and really working on um, on trying to be like my most authentic self. And I think part of that comes with being able to say no. Mm. Mm. Do you all think that there's a stigma out there that you have to, because I know that there's a saying about like, you have to put others before yourself. And how do we find balance between looking out for other people and helping and then knowing that, okay, I need to say, no, I just cannot do it. So what's the difference between putting others before yourself versus like, okay, yeah, I could put you before me, but I really need to say no. I, I don't believe that there is anything wrong with sacrificing sometimes knowing that it's going to help someone, even if you want to say no, and you would rather do something for yourself in the moment. It's just understanding and knowing what that balance is. I would um, also add, if I know that it's something that I am particularly skilled at, or the Lord has anointed me in some sort of way to do said task or what is being asked of me, and there just truly isn't anyone else to, to do what is being asked, then I, I find I find a yes, even though sometimes you want to say no. But I think that that is a part of just being, um, I guess, just you have to compromise sometimes. And I think that it's important to understand that there are certain things. I know in my family, there are certain things that 
everyone knows that I do well. And so they always ask me to do it. And at times I don't want to. And in those moments I say no, but if there's just no one else, no other option, then you do it. And half the time when you go ahead and push through, even though you don't want to because you're graced for it or you're anointed for it, you don't really mind. It's done. You, you've taken care of it, done. Move on to the next thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. I noticed that. you all were saying, um, making a statement about 40. <laughs> 40, yeah. it was like I was just literally finding myself at 40. <laughs> but um, my no, as you all was talking about 40, my no just came at 62. And like I said, last year, um, and like you were saying, I think it's Alicia. Um, I I, okay, thank you. I, um, I'm one of those people that my family pulls on a lot, a lot. And it's so hard to tell them no, because it's sad to say that the children don't step up. Um, they're older. Um, they know I would get it done. But like Dar was saying, when do you say no? And I say no out of love. Um, I tell them, you know, I'm going to do it for you, but not right now. I can't do it at this moment. Uh, give me maybe a week. Um, I, I, I don't allow them to push me in the corner to the point as a cat is pushed in the corner, have to come out fighting, meaning fighting in my body, fighting mm. um, to do my job and to help them. So, yes. Um, the age of 63, I am enjoying what God is about to do in my life and what he is doing in my life. And you are at the age of 40 or 41 or what have you, you know, continue to keep pressing. Um, don't allow what I want to say. I want you to, I want you to continue to say no. I, I, I commend you all for saying no at the age, in the age of 40. Um, I was always, I don't want to say afraid to say no to, especially to my family, but I just didn't want to hurt their feelings or hurt other people's feelings because, mm -hmm. uh, there was no, well, I'm not going to say there was no one else. I just felt that it was no one else. They call on me, but it's always somebody else. Cause if I wasn't here on this earth, who would they call? Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at it. So. Continue mm -hmm. to keep doing what you're doing. I commend you all. I take my hat off to all you 40s. <laughs> <laughs> you touched on something, Miss Connie, that was actually going to be one of the, the questions. It wasn't a pre-question, but something that I wanted to ask everybody and whoever wants to jump in and answer it. But do you think a part of not saying no is it could deal with trying to be a people pleaser? Do you think some of that, I know everybody's reasons are different, but do you think that that could be a reason trying to please people? I think it could be a lot of reasons. And I, I really like what Aisha said, um, starting that off about maybe she's anointed or maybe it's just something that she's really good at. I think that mm -hmm. speaks for a lot of what would make me feel like, okay, I need to do it. Um, but the other piece of it that I was going to say is I think something else to look for is those opportunities. If someone's asking you to do something, is there an opportunity for you to teach them instead of doing it for them? Is there some opportunity in there to teach them and, you know, impart that knowledge that you have on them? Like in Connie's Constance case, if it's sewing, then no, you know, that's a different story, but maybe there's some opportunity to maybe help that person that's asking for assistance with something. Maybe it's um, something that you research and have some knowledge on that you can pass on and then they won't need to come back and ask for the help the next time. So that was just something that came to my mind as maybe an opportunity to, to lighten that load or that repeat question, depending on what they're asking for help with. A great point. Mm -hmm. oh, have you have any of you ever experienced in your no, um, you kind of felt guilt or you felt like forced 
to do something out of guilt, like, okay, well, you should do this for me because X, Y, Z. And if you've experienced that, how do you, how do you deal with that without beating yourself up about it and saying, oh, I need to just go ahead and do this or I'm not going to do it, but not feeling guilty about it. Oh, <laughs> it's hard for me to feel like I've ever been forced into doing something. I think for me, I, I, I always look at trying to find a way to fit it in, to do it mm -hmm. and to be a blessing to someone else if there's some way that I can help them. So I think for me, I try to process through whatever's being asked and try to find the positive in it and not going to it begrudgingly or, you know, okay. unhappy mm -hmm. about doing it. So I really can't think of times that I did something. By the time I do it, I have found a way to, found some, to find something good in it and why I'm doing okay. it. Mm, that's good. I I think um, with me, I, I don't want to say force, but I do want to say try to make you feel guilty. Yeah. Um, I have a I have family members, you know, with my mom. Um, when they're sick, one of the things they would say is, I, "You don't love." <laughs> it's not. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. You don't love me and. And, and I need you to come over and I need you, those type of things. It, it's kind of hard to say no, but you know they playing on your emotions. But at the same time, because you love them so much, um, you, go, you go head on and be there with them and take care of things and run to the store or clean up the house or whatever it may be. Uh, ministry wise, for me, uh, being in the ministry for 23 years, it was a challenge for me to finally um, release the ministry. Well, I'm not going to say finally release. God gave me the opportunity to release it. But even in the midst of me getting preparing to release and pass the mantle, um, I was feeling guilty. I was feeling guilty because no one stepped up to the mantle. No one was going to step up. And so I'm like, I, I better stay. But I, I said, no, no, somebody will step up. So I would not shrink back because I did it twice. <laughs> I did it twice. But this last time I'm like, no, God, you released me. And somebody either will step up or they will find someone. And right at the last minute, somebody st stepped up and took on the mantle. And so I felt so much better about it. But twice prior to this, I just kept saying, okay, I stay, I stay. But this last time, like Dara says, that no is you have to stick to it. You have to stand on it like a rock and don't, uh, don't allow anyone to move you. Okay, thank you, Miss Connie. I want to delve into the realm of emotions and gee, I still got your book. I got to read it, but there was a book that uh, it was either in a book or I think we had this conversation. I, I don't remember which one it was, but it changed my life. And it was talking about creating space. And for me, that has been um, just something that I have decided and it's made a difference in my overall life in general when I'm having to have conversations with people and tough conversations, my no is making a choice and a decision that whatever is coming my way, that I'm not going to take on the emotions of that person. Like, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to be compassionate. I'm going to be empathetic. But I'm one of those people where it's like, I take it. I put it in a book bag. I'm carrying it with me. It's dragging me down. And so that's what my no looks like where I have said, no, I'm not going to take this on. And so can anybody else relate to that? And anyone, anyone want to share their thoughts about that? 
No, I think that's, um, I, I struggle a lot with that too. And I also want to just comment on the people pleasing thing. Um, I, I know I've, um, the, I guess what I, what I should say is that I, I'm much better at saying no now, but it doesn't mean that it's comfortable. So it still feels really uncomfortable off sometimes to, to say no to people, especially when, um, especially when to, to what you had said, Constance, about like kind of feeling like the guilt trip a little bit. Um, and so I think to your, to what kind of what you're saying too, Dara, it's like, I can't, I can't own, I can't hold those, those feelings, right? Like that's not my stuff to hold, you know, my stuff to hold is, um, if I say yes to this, it might make me resentful later. Um, there's a whole slew of things that can happen on my end when I say no, when I say yes to things that I know I should be saying no to. And so I think, I think part of the, part of my work is to, is to know what's mine to hold and what's mine to give back to somebody else so that, so that I'm not carrying other people's stuff. And I think, I think the more I pay attention to, um, to like what I'm feeling inside and how other, like how, how I'm receiving other people, um, I think the more, the more kind of, I guess, emotional intelligence I have around that and being able to to respond to it. And I think the other thing is um, I do a lot of self-talk. So like yesterday, somebody, um, somebody called me and it was, I, it was more of like a work relationship and it was in the late in the evening, but I had plans already. And, and so there was this moment where I was just like, should I answer it? Should I not answer it? Well, then what if I have to go do this thing? But I'm like on my way to this birthday party. Right. And so, and so it was just so in my mind, I was like, no, you know what? Like, I'm not the only person that, that can respond to this phone call, you know? Um, and, and I'm not working right now, you know, it's Saturday and it's like nine o'clock at night. And so, so it took a little bit of work for me, like some, some inner self talk to kind of be okay with it. And then like, I reached out to the person today and everything was totally fine and nothing was wrong. Um, but so that, that's some, a little bit of some of my journey in terms of how I internally kind of process my nose and get comfortable with it. I think that's good, Gia, because mm -hmm. just from that story, you know, one thing that I try to be aware of is that some people don't have boundaries. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, getting that message at that time of the day on a Saturday, I think is really important for you to assess that and say, is this something that I need to respond to? Uh, because you do have some people that they may have that kind of time available and just, I don't know. I, I think you have to be careful with opening certain doors and stretching out certain boundaries because if, if they see, oh, okay, she's ac accessible to me, you know, at this time of the night on, on the weekend, you know, that could be opening something that you don't necessarily want. But I, I also wanted to kind of also say it's funny you talked about a lot of self-talk i totally do that as well when i come across like i have you know my personality is the way it is and my husband has this thing where he says you know you can set the temperature you can set the temperature so you know there's a lot of different personalities and and things that happen and things are said but what we can control or what i feel i can control is how i receive it how I process it and how I let it impact how my day is going to be, you know? That's so that's something I, I have a lot of self-talk with myself as well. You know, situations happen, um, things are said. If I don't particularly feel good about that load that's just been laid on me, I'm immediately like going into this mode of thinking about it, processing it, you know, assessing, did I receive it the right way? Um, maybe there's another way I can look at this. If it's pretty cut and dry that this is somebody that maybe needs some guidance or some direction or some, some support, I'm thinking about what kind of support can I give them to help them feel better. But more than anything, like I go into this mode of how can I fix this and get it off of me? Like you were saying, Dar, I don't want to put it in that backpack and carry it around. So what can mm -hmm. I do to hopefully help resolve this? Mm -hmm. But if not, you know, what is my part in it? How can I share what I can share, but not take it on and start carrying it? So mm -hmm. that for me involves a lot of self-talk as well, like Gia talked about. That's good. 
That is good. And I just want to add, based on what Ms. Connie mentioned a few moments ago, where she said, I, I related so, so much to what you said as far as your family relying on you. And I just had a conversation with Dara about how people pull on me a lot. And it's always been that way. I'm the, I'm the eldest of six kids. I have a large family. And as far as just doing things, I think that I think it's important to distinguish if you have an, a heart, like a helpful heart or just altruism about you and people see that, they will pull on you, ask for things or something you're good at, they're going to come to you. But it, what, I, what helped me was learning the difference between those who were trying to manipulate that mm. and those who really needed the help. And so when you learn the difference, I think that it, it is so very helpful. It's good to, you know, we know we know them by their fruit and some of that fruit be, be rotten. And so those people, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, some you just pluck right off the tree and it's great, but some of it's been on the ground for a little bit. And, um, <laughs> and so you need to learn who you're dealing with and who's coming in to ask you for certain things. And what, what I've also found that has helped me tremendously is to begin to show people how to do things. Like I, I have a, a love of travel. And so people see that and like, well, well, she knows how to do this. Can you plan a trip for me? Can you do this? Sure. And I got to the place where I'm like, Lord, I need to open up a travel agency and get paid I for know. this. And, but I began to show people and kind of teach them and give them structural. This is what I do. Here's a website. That way they can kind of take it upon themselves to learn. That way I'm not carrying around knowing that I'm busy, there, there's other things or other endeavors that I want to want to do just because you're good at something, just because you have the skill for something or you're blessed for it, anointed for whatever you want to say, does not mean that you always have to do it because then what time are you leaving for yourself? So I would take the backpack. I wouldn't have both straps around. I would maybe have one strap on because somebody else would have to, you know, grab the other strap and learn something and kind of kind of glean from what what I've been helping them with for such a long time. And I think it's, you know, we're human and there are certain things that you can carry just depending on what the what the situation is, but you cannot allow the emotions of a situation to to lament in you or, you know, you can't allow that to become a part of a stitch within you. So you have to that but that takes some time to kind of learn how to maneuver around that. Um that's all I just wanted to say. I just wanted to kind of point out that I think it is very, very, very important to begin to teach people and share some of the things that people continually ask of you. That way they can help themselves. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Mm-hmm. I also want to touch on, Marla, what you were saying about what Nike was telling you about the temperature. And, and that's something that I often like to say as well. I remember... Uh, someone had mentioned about the thermostat and the thermometer and basically the thermostat, they, they're not affected by what's going around them. Whereas the, the thermostat, they're not affected by what's around them, but the thermometer is. And so how has that, is that still a work in progress for you? Cause I know you said you do the self-talk is that like a constant challenge or do you find that it's become easier for you when situations arise in setting the tone and making the decision and choosing how you're going to respond to that situation? I think it's, I think it's all still a process um, and it just requires, you know, each scenario is different, but it just, it, it's a, it's a reflex. I guess I'll say it that way. It's a reflex now. So, think, you know, something will happen. I'm like, okay, I don't like this. Don't like the way it feels or it feels too heavy or it's not, you know, my load to carry. So what can I do to process this? So I'm always in like process mode and that's where the self-talk comes in. So I think it's just a, a reflex now, you know, and some, some scenarios take a little bit longer and they, they may require steps. And a lot of that is just managing people or 
dealing with the way, you know, learning my current manager. So it's just a lot of different scenarios, but I can say um, it's all case by case. Okay. You know, the process also listening to Mala, um, having a process for me is to have an ear to hear what God is telling me. Um, I know I was having a conversation with Dara about a week ago, and I was saying that I wanted to say something to someone. I really, really wanted to say something. And it's like, be quiet. And I, you know, it's like you're sitting over there in your high chair, knowing that your parent is trying to feed you something good, but you're fighting and you really, really don't want to eat it. You really don't want to eat it because you're being selfish to a point. That's how I was. I wanted to say something to this person so bad. And all I kept hearing, be quiet. I got this. I got this. So having that process of hearing God, standing on what he's telling you, because he can fight our battles better than we can. Um, so, yes, it, it's a good thing to continue to know that you are still in that battle, saying no or not saying anything at all, just waiting, just waiting for the opportune time so that you can see that you won another battle or, you know, you passed that test. <laughs> I passed that test. I want to let y'all know. <laughs> Oh, that was good. That was really good. So to to that end, has anybody experienced like, you know, like there's a situation and you're not supposed to try to take it on yourself and deal with it. And then you deal with it. And then it's just like, I knew I wasn't supposed to, to try to handle this. Has anybody ever, I know I've experienced that. Has anybody experienced that? Like you take matters in your own hands. Can I just share real quick, darling? This isn't exactly, I thought I was going to take a matter into my own hands. And this goes, I just want to expand on what Constance just shared. There's a scenario that was happening and I felt like I was being led that I have to say something. I have to say something. And I had this meeting scheduled that would have been my opportunity to say something. That meeting got rescheduled three or four times. <laughs> and the whole time when the first meeting was coming around, I was still conflicted. And I'm like, am I supposed to? And I and and this goes back to having that consultation with God about it, because I'm like, I want to do the right thing. And I want to be, you know, just like Constance said, God will fight your battles. And you don't even have to try to figure everything out. So I was really staying open and keeping my ears open meeting got rescheduled the first time i'm like hmm okay and the reason it got rescheduled i'm like all right makes sense then the second time and by the third time i'm like okay i get it i hear it and it was very clear to me that no i'm not supposed to i'm not supposed to handle this the way that i thought i was and um i can say i've seen a very weird change uh, with that person in a good way. And so um, I just wanted to add that to say that, you know, I agree with Constance about, you know, very much being open to listening for God's direction on things. Awesome. I love that. Um, the I've learned over, well, first off, to answer your question, yes, I have definitely taken things in my own hands and <laughs> made a mess of things and been like, you know, this is why I should have not done this, right? Like, it all makes sense. So, um, so yes. And I think that um, uh, what you said, Marla, like, really just paying attention, like, recognizing that, um, trying to make a distinction between um, when there is something where I do need to speak, you know, and, and I do need to say something. And so oftentimes, sometimes it comes around, like, ad maybe, like, advocacy for myself. Or maybe advocacy for somebody else um 
typically around things that may be harmful, right? And so I do know that, that there's an opportunity for me to say something. But then I think that then, but on the other hand, like I trying to make the distinction where she's like, no, I actually just can't fix this. You know, like whatever's happening in this external situation, like it's just beyond my control. Like it's mm -hmm. too big for me. And so being able to trust the delays. And mm -hmm. so I do, I pay attention a lot to, to things like what you just said, like appointments get rescheduled or maybe a project kind of falls through or, um, or somebody doesn't show up for something like trying to pay attention as opposed to maybe being angry or pushing forward, like just being like, oh, okay, wait a second. Maybe, maybe this is an opportunity um, for me just to kind of step back and see what the spirit is doing in a particular situation. And I've, I've actually have, um, I feel like I, I have a, it's less stress for me. Um, so I'm not carrying as much emotional stress in those areas. And I think the other thing is, it's like, I've also have witnessed some of what you said too, Marla, like just shifts. And in really good, healthy ways that kind of just open up like whatever was clogged in that space, it just kind of opens up and things seem to be able to move a lot more freely. Um, but that is just, that has come over time of just bumping my head so much and just finally just recognizing, no, the delays can actually maybe just be gifts um, in disguises. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So for the last few minutes that we have before before I, I wrap up and I um, I close out, I just want to take a moment of just conversation and reflection on the the freedom in the know. And I don't recall who it was that mentioned. It may have been you, Marla, earlier on, and you were talking about the importance of how we need to pour back into ourselves because we pour into others. And so, and I, I know another term that they use that's used a lot is the self-care. So I want, and I know we've already kind of talked a little bit and given examples of what that note does, but I just want, want you all to just kind of summarize for me in just a few words, what that note is for you, what it's brought, what, ha what it has brought to your life in terms of uh, peace or empowerment or whatever, whatever that word or words are for you saying no, for your no. I'm sorry, can you repeat that last part again? The, there's some static. Oh, no problem. So basically I was just asking for everybody just as a recap, because there's been different experiences shared. So for the last few minutes before I close out, just overall what the no has done for you. Uh, Marla had mentioned earlier on about how it's so important for us as we pour out to others that we pour back into ourselves. So any lasting words of encouragement that or encouragement that you would like to leave to those that are, are tuned in or just overall how it's helped you or whatever that you would like to share? My no um, is, has given me the opportunity to get more closer to God and to start recognize the things I need to do for my body, you know, so that my healing process can uh, manifest itself more quickly. That's good. That's good. Anyone else? So I would say that a no has given me my life back. Um, mm. Being able to say no. There was a period where I kind of stepped back when I talked about the burnout, where I had to step back and I was just like, I don't actually exist in my own life. Like in my whole life is filled up with responding to everybody else. And now that I know how to say no, I have clear boundaries and I have boundaries with myself. And so it's like, I have a schedule now, you know, like I wake up at a certain time, I start work at this time, I go to the gym at this time, I cook dinner. And so, and that's just, that has given me just like a tremendous amount, like I've created space for me to exist. Mm. And that feels really freeing for me. Um, and my, my load feels lighter because that's now good. I have time for me. That's good. Mm -hmm. I would say my no has led to questions because largely, as I, as I mentioned before, I have, you know, set, I'm trying to help people go 
learn a, a few things. And, and so that leads to questions. I'll give an example of my mom. There's a, I, I tease my mom a lot because she just does not want to learn anything having to do with technology for the most part. <laughs> and so I would do everything for her. And then finally I was like, mom, technology is not going anywhere. So you have to learn this stuff and I'll teach you. And so I would say my no has led to a lot of questions because she'll be like, how do I attach this again to the email? And so, which is a good thing because that's self-reliance and it, it gives me more free time. It's much easier and quicker for me to send her over whomever it may be. She's just one example. Um, instructions so that she can do it and sustain for herself and I can do something else. So it has allowed for a little bit more free time. And, and I think it also helps the other person with the satisfaction of learning something new or, you know, delving into something that they may not have before. I agree with everything that's been shared. I would say for me, it's just created more of a balance, which I know mm -hmm. I've heard um, through others sharing. So definitely more balance um, and an opportunity to exhale mo more often. That's yeah. good. Which I literally do exhale. Like I have to have moments in my day where I'm like, <sighs> and it really feels good to be able to do that. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, ladies. And I'll just say that my no is, it's a, it's a journey of self-discovery. Because for me, I feel like a lot of times I just said yes. I, I don't, I don't want to say I believe it is. I would say yes because I felt like it was the right thing to, to do. And I didn't want to say no. And I'm finding that in my no, it's, it's helping me to really discover who I am. And it's also freeing up time for me to do the things that I love to do. And, it, and it's not even necessarily, not necessarily... It, it could just be at being at home and relaxing and, and watching a good movie. I'm just giving an example, but it's allowing me that time of rest because for one thing I would say was I did have a hard time saying no. And what was very interesting was I would fill my plate. I fill my plate up with multiple things. And it was kind of like I became, I got to a point where I was always used to being busy. So then when some things freed up, then I was just like, okay, something's wrong. You know, like I got to fill it back up. So I had to, my no became comfortable in periods and seasons of not having a lot to do and being okay with that and just really waiting to hear from God as to what the next thing was, because it's like, situations can present itself and you can get involved in different projects. And, Oh, I remember TD Jake says something a long time ago that stuck with me. And it said, a good thing is not always the right thing. And so it can be a, it could be worthy. It could be a charitable cause, but it might not be the right thing for you. And so in my season of no, I have learned to really just be still and be okay with that and just wait until like I know, okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do or this is what you don't want me to do. So that's my my season right now of no, just, just being comfortable with not having so many different things to do. So... I want to thank you ladies so much for coming on today and sharing and engaging in this conversation. I so appreciate you all. And I thank you. And I know that it's going to be a blessing to so many people. And before we go, I would be remiss if I did not do the prayer of salvation. So if there is anybody that has tuned in, if you would like to just rededicate your life, or if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's very simple. I'm just going to ask you to just repeat a prayer after me. So if you all could just um, bow your heads, close your eyes, and just repeat after me. And this is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, 
I thank you. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and that you rose again. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to be my Lord, and to be my Savior. Thank you, for I am saved. And Lord Jesus, Father God, I just ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Lord Jesus, I would like to rededicate my life. Lord, I would like to put you back in first position where you belong. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, that means that you are a son and daughter of God, that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in today for a Soul Saving Sunday. Today's topic was Finding My No. Once again, I would like to thank my special guests. I would like to thank Ms. Constance Clinton. I would like to thank Marla, Marla Smith McCoy. <laughs> Why would I get that wrong? Uh, I would like to thank Aisha Chisholm and I would like to thank Legia Johnson. I would like to thank you all ladies so much for coming on the broadcast today. So my closing words is, I would like to thank those that have tuned in. I would encourage you all to share this broadcast because you never know there's somebody out there that needs to hear this information. And also, I would like to just thank you all for tuning in because you could have been in anywhere, but you decided to tune in for the time, for the hour to spend that with us. And I always like to say that our time is one of our most valuable resources. So once again, I thank you so much for tuning in. And ladies, I just cannot thank you all enough for being a part of this conversation. And with that being said, I would like to just encourage those that are tuned in to always let your light shine bright for all to see. Until next time. Bye, everyone.